Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about some of the major updates in regards to this humongous crater that was discovered in Greenland back in 2018 that actually created quite a lot of buzz in the scientific community. And this new discovery, this new paper, or actually two different studies, seem to have finally identified the exact age of this crater, potentially helping us resolve one of the oldest mysteries in regards to the climate on the planet or actually this very specific event that happened a few million years ago that the scientists currently do not understand at all. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the crater itself and what the scientists were able to find. First of all, let's take a look at where all of this is located. Just to actually help you understand why it took so long for the scientists to find this. This is part of a relatively large glacier known as Hiawatha Glacier that you see right here, and the crater itself is sort of, well, it's really everywhere here. As a matter of fact, it's sort of visible in the image if you were to trace the outskirts of the crater by using the ice. But in this case, it was discovered completely by accident during one of the routine scans by NASA airplanes. And the discovery here was really, really big. Mostly, of course, because of the size of the crater. It's over 30 kilometers across. And the original discovery here suggested that this crater might have actually not been even that old. Some of the original assumptions even suggested that it could have been produced approximately 12 to 13,000 years ago, at least at the earliest. It could also be a few million years old, and so here the scientists didn't really know where to start counting. But if this crater was 12 to 13,000 years, this could also provide evidence to one of the more unknown phenomena known as the Younger Dryas Period. The period where there was a sudden change in climate on the planet that lasted for a few hundred years. And several scientists in the past have suggested that it might have actually been due to some kind of an impact, with this idea referred to as the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis. But this is not a widely accepted hypothesis, and there is quite a lot of disagreement about some of the studies that try to prove this. Regardless, this was still an interesting discovery. Interestingly enough, a few months later, NASA has identified a second crater not so far away from the first one. In this case, it was slightly smaller and also potentially happened a few million years prior to the first crater, but it was still an interesting discovery and definitely showed us that we know so little about Greenland and it does have quite a lot of secrets still hiding from us underneath all of this ice. But it was really this Hiawatha Glacier uh, Crater, or I guess Hiawatha Crater, that's always been the most interesting to various scientists. And it was always about determining the exact age when this occurred. So first of all, when it comes to the size, 30 kilometers, that's one of the biggest craters on the planet. And it would have been formed by an asteroid approximately one and a half kilometers across. Smaller than the one that killed the dinosaurs, but big enough to cause a major shift on the planet with potentially catastrophic effects affecting the entire planet afterwards. This impact would have been so powerful that it would most likely vaporize approximately 20 cubic kilometers of rock. And if there was ice in the area, it would have melted most of the ice, introducing huge amounts of water in the process. But although the initial assumption here was that the asteroid might have crashed into the already formed ice sheet, a lot of the evidence initially was very circumstantial. For example, a lot of this was based on the scans from the airplane, the radar scanning. With the important geological evidence obviously being hidden beneath one kilometer of ice, so obviously somewhat inaccessible to scientists trying to study the rocks. But inaccessible doesn't mean impossible. And so some of the recent studies from two different universities were able to collect enough data and enough rocks by using various riverbanks that carry meltwater from inside the crater and deliver all of the needed rocks that could then be studied. And so two separate teams, one from Denmark and one from Sweden, were able to independently collect just enough of these melt rock samples from several sampling sites located not so far from the impact structure itself. And on top of this, they actually used two separate methods to date the rocks which represents two completely independent studies that seem to come to a relatively similar conclusion, which is extremely difficult to argue with. For example, one of the studies focused on the mineral zircon, and during a typical impact event, it will usually form new crystals which can incorporate various radioactive elements. And by finding the ratio of uranium to lead inside these crystals, it becomes possible to date the rocks determining their age. 
But the other study focused on a different technique using argon-argon dating. And instead of using rocks, they used sand collected from the river downstream. And by using argon, they determined that the sand in this case was most likely changed approximately 56 to 66 million years ago. And remember, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs happened around 66 million years ago as well. But the study that used the rocks and uranium lead dating determined the age to be closer to about 58 million years ago. In other words, the actual studies sort of coincided at that one date, maybe around 58 million years ago, plus minus a few million years. Which suggests several things. First of all, definitely not related to the younger driest impact hypothesis. Second of all, the impact very likely happened when there was no ice in this region. The entire Greenland back then was probably a lot more warmer, it probably possessed a lot more trees, and might have actually been even tropical. But more importantly, this date, this impact, corresponds to another really unusual mystery that we've had trouble answering for a very long time. Let me show you this graph that I've showed you in some of the previous videos. This is a graph that sort of shows us the average temperature on the planet in the last 65 million years, essentially since the extinction of the dinosaurs, most dinosaurs. With the present day being somewhere right here. Now look around the graph and see if you see anything unusual. Okay, let me zoom in. There's a very unusual spike in temperature that we still cannot explain that happened approximately 55 and a half million years ago. It's usually referred to as PETM or Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. Basically when the planet suddenly became extremely hot. Something that probably lasted for at least 20,000 years. And even today there was no exact explanation for what might have happened here. Until, I guess, now. There is currently an extremely high chance that somehow this might be actually related. This relatively large crater that's only about 5 to 6 times smaller than the crater that killed the dinosaurs might have produced just enough destruction and released just enough gases into the atmosphere that it could have been responsible for this unusual event that currently does not really have a very good explanation otherwise. Now it's still not exact in terms of dates, 58 million versus 55 and a half million, but further studies and further investigations of the crater might determine this with a little bit more accuracy. Once again, still a huge hypothesis and basically just a huge speculation on my part, but definitely something worth investigating and worth exploring a little bit more. And because this is such an exciting crater that was discovered only a few years ago, and probably the most exciting crater discovered in the last few decades, trying to figure out exactly what effects this had on the planet and how it might have affected evolution on the planet is of course something the scientists would love to find out more about. Naturally, a rock that's about 1.5 kilometers in size that's produced a crater that's about 31 kilometers in size is not something that we can sort of ignore. It definitely had some kind of a major impact on the planet. But I guess until future studies, we're not going to know more. Although I guess we've been getting really good at finding these new craters, and I'm sure we'll discover a lot more, possibly even in the regions we've never looked at. For example, not so long ago, actually just a few days ago from when I'm making this video, completely by accident, the scientists looking at northeast China discovered what they refer to as Yilan Crater, a crater that's about 1.8 kilometers across and is now officially the largest crater created on the planet in the last 50,000 years or so. The previous record holder was the famous meteor crater located in Arizona. And this crater is believed to have been created anywhere from 46 to 53,000 years ago by a rock that was probably around 50 to 70 meters across. It wasn't really that large, but it was large enough to produce this relatively large formation. Something that we do believe happens on the planet yeah, at least every few thousand years or so. But the fact that it was discovered just now is of course kind of surprising. It means that there are a lot of craters out there that we're not actually seeing, hidden in pretty much plain sight, that we're going to be discovering in the next few years, simply because we now have so many new techniques to both scan the Earth, but to also analyze all of this data using a lot of new data analysis techniques. And so it's only a matter of time before we find something even bigger and something even more exciting. But I guess until then, well, that's all I wanted to mention. Definitely an exciting study, definitely an exciting discovery, and potentially a resolution to one of the older mysteries. On that note, check out the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.